Well, that woman left her shouting. <laughs> Keep going. We're live. We're live? Yeah, we're live. I thought, my Hello. goodness, we might as well go. Well, that's good. I, I didn't want to waste that. <laughs> well, good morning, going. Mark. Play How a little are bit you more. today? I am good, and I'm so excited that today we're going to uh, get into this. I want to let you know that I have a little gift coming your way. You do? Yeah. It's called a, a USB microphone. <laughs> you did not buy me a microphone, did I you? did. <laughs> are you sending me a bill with it <laughs> no 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 it'll be there wednesday you're kidding me no so when we do this you'll sound as good as i do all right i'll call up one of my young friends and get them to help me hook well it all up. you do is literally on the side of your laptop you know those little usb yeah. mm -hmm. imports just, it, the mic just, just plugs in it just plugs in and works great so okay how are you well, doing thank this morning? Thank you so much in advance. Uh, well, you're welcome. I hope it'll improve our communication and our sound quality well, and all that. Well, Look at this. What I've is got that? My, which way do I need to go? This way? Yeah. yeah. Oh, There's my Mark Lowry coaster. That, <laughs> that was your last gift to me. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> got a whole set of them. I love them. <laughs> Buddy, uh, all right, What? tell us about John 1, 1 through 18. Let's get into it. Okay. Um, and well, then, so, and then, or do you want to play it a little bit first? Let's sing a little no, no, bit. No, I don't. I, actually, I was thinking though. Let's let's let's. How about those first songs? So we're talking about the office of the day. The, okay. The, the office. So today's readings are Psalms one, two, and three, and then uh, a Genesis passage from from the early, like the second chapter of Genesis. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then the um, then there's a Hebrews passage, that first chapter of Hebrews, which is amazing, which is all about Jesus and his preeminence and who he is and all this. And it's one of the one of those great passages, like Colossians one and John one, which is also John one one through eighteen, is our gospel passage of the day. So today it's really all about Jesus. I mean, today's readings. Well, I mean, you might, Genesis, that might be a stretch because really you're, we're talking, uh, we're telling one of the creation stories, the one, the creation story that appears in Genesis 2. And it's really about marriage and Adam and Eve and all of that. So, but I was, I was struck this morning uh, by the Psalms. A lot of time in these daily offices, the Psalms are the first thing you read and they kind of prepare you. You pre prepare, they always prepare my heart to hear and receive, you know, what the scriptures are going to teach me that day. And um, this morning, it was great because it was those first three Psalms, which are, I mean, three of my favorites. So you want to read those? Yeah. I like this. Uh, I'm not sure what trans. I think this is maybe the Revised Standard Version. Okay. I'm reading. I'm reading out of the U version Bible on my app. My, uh, oh, okay. Okay, we're going to where now? Psalm one. Hey, Psalm. let me ask you this: Have you got the message on your? Yeah. Why don't you get to pull the message up? Okay. Well, that's always I, I like to have the message close by because it's a paraphrase, and it kind of when I come across a term that I've heard a million times, I go, "What does that really mean?" Or right. you know, how, how would Peterson? amplify that in his paraphrase and what version are you reading out of today well i think this is the revised standard it's well, coming out of it on the back of it the in the, from the psalms in the prayer in the prayer okay book. psalm what now one okay here we go and we get to it all right so happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked nor lingered in the way of sinners nor sat in the seats of the scornful their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. 
For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. So that's Psalm 1. Well, that wasn't the Revised Standard Version because I looked at, I got that too. This app okay. has every version known to man. Really? I need I'm to get that app. I'm serious. But in the message, out. you know the message. How, I love the way he says, you don't walk in the ruts of those blind as bats. Right. <laughs> you don't stand with the good for nothings. You don't take your seat among the know-it-alls. I have a few times. Me too. Instead, you thrill to God's word. You chew on scripture day and night. You're a tree replanted in Eden. Whoa. Isn't that great? I love that. Bearing fresh fruit every month. Never dropping a leaf, always in blossom. You're not at all like the wicked who are mere windblown dust without defense and court unfit company for innocent people god charts the road you take the road they take leads to nowhere <laughs> that message is that what you, my, I, i've got a copy of the message and that last line says the road they take is skid row Ooh, i wonder why it's different i don't know maybe he revised it at some point <laughs> god charts the road you take the road they take is skid road it okay then the what do you read um, well, let's talk about that just okay. for a minute. I mean, what, what hits you about that? That kind of strikes me as a very likely Psalm to hear is the first Psalm in the, in the, in the, in the hymnal, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it, I mean, it, it, the whole thing is talking about is how important the, the word of God is to the person who lives by it. Mm. Right. Right. And, uh, I mean, it's just a great place. This is where we start. I mean, remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and th that first temptation of turning stones into bread. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, the, the, the devil's temptation was, hey, man, you do this. You start doing miracles like this. You'll have everybody. Oh. And then Jesus comes back and says, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Right. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And he was quoting De Deuteronomy. You know, he was quoting scripture back at the devil. <laughs> well, it sounds a lot like my mama, this this first one. You know, you get it, you you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. You know? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's, you could put that whole first, first one in like, uh, just, you know, be careful, you know. Be like a tree planted by the waters that yields its fruit in its season. Yeah. And boy, that sometimes can take a while, can it? Oh, somebody complained about me crossing my arms in the comments. Can you yes, said, Mark, that's yes, bad yes. body language. Well, you know what? Sorry. It's the most comfortable way because my man boobs get in the way if I don't hold them up a little. I've, well, I, just, I have a nice shelf here. Yeah, it's a nice office. shelf to post them on and hold your boobs together. You know, because it's... Since I've lost my testosterone, oh my goodness, buddy. <laughs> well, listen, we're just we're just two old men trying to be comfortable. They yeah, need to, yeah, yeah, don't to judge us. us. Uh, but anyway, so what do you get out of it? His delight I mean, is in the law the of the thing. Lord. Uh, you know that um, if I start my day in the morning going to a news stream and start listening to what's being fed to me through Oh, you mean Media. on the news? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I mean, it just about derails me every time. I, I just does not, that's not the way for me to get my head and heart ready for the day. Yeah. And so that's one of the ways it's like, uh, in fact, I got this little book here called David's Crown. Uh-huh. It's a, it's poems, sonnets actually, by a poet named Malcolm Geit. And it's called David's Crown, Sounding the Psalms. So he writes a psalm. I mean, he writes a, a, a sonnet for every psalm in the Psalter, all right? Okay. So let me just read what he reads, what he writes in, for this first, and see if this doesn't say it better than what I'm trying to say. But I love the way he put it. 
Come to the place where every breath is praise and God is breathing through each passing breeze. Be planted by the waterside and raise your arms with Christ beneath these rooted trees who lift their breathing leaves up to the skies. Be rooted too, as still and strong as these, open alike to sun and rain. Arise from meditation by these waters. Bear the fruit of that deep rootedness. Be wise in the tree's long wisdom. Learn to share the secret of their patience. Pass the day in their green fastness and their quiet air. Slowly discern a life, a truth, a way, where simple being flowers in delight. Then let the chaff of life just blow away. Mm. So he really kind of expounds on that metaphor of the tree planted by the yeah. waters that the psalmist let said. Your you know, roots go deep and let the roots go deep. I mean, I, I love that that metaphor. You know, remember the song? We shall, we shall, we shall not be moved. Oh yeah, yeah. That was. I shall, a oh, oh, do I remember it? Do I remember it? I shall not be, I shall not be moved I shall not be, I shall not be moved Just like a tree planted by the water I shall not be moved Anyway, it goes on from there. Yeah, yeah, we do that on here quite a bit. And I do, so, it, and I do it with reverb, buddy. Huh? And I do it with reverb. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the tricks. No, I have to. I'm 63. <laughs> if I had, if I could put a tuner on here, I'd do it. I know. I let okay. reverb it cover a multitude of sins. Uh, say that again. I said that reverb can cover a multitude oh, of sins. Oh, it gives you that Johnny Mathis touch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I haven't right. heard you do Johnny Mathis in a long time. Well, I, that's too long. Oh, chances. Wait, let me get my reverb on. Oh, chances of. Oh, I wear a silly in. <laughs> okay, um, now, you, you now back to what we were talking about. What were you okay. saying right before I got off on the spell? That that bearing fruit, you know, like a tree. I mean, he uses that 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 image, that metaphor of the tree that's planted by the waters. I mean, if you ever see, there's a sycamore planted down here by a stream near our house. Mm -hmm. The sycamores grow big anyway around here, but I mean, this thing it didn't take root till probably ten years ago. Mm -hmm. It is like 50, 60 feet tall. I can't believe how quickly this tree has grown because it's right there on the water's edge. It is just soaking up water all the time. Hmm. And it's the healthiest tree in the neighborhood. Really? So it's just, it's a great image of that. When we do this every day, when we make this like breathing, like, like it realize what Jesus told the devil that our, the bread we have daily with out of God's word is more important than the bread we eat at mealtime. Uh -huh. When we have that sort of faith uh, in, in God to, to work in us through his word, I just think we become like, like that tree, that we start experiencing life like that tree. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old or whatever, you're, you're, you're still productive. You're still, you're, your leaves are bearing fruit. You know, it's, yeah. you're kind of a, a picture of the tree of life. In, in, in the world around you. And that doesn't mean to say you're going to be walking around sinless and not making any mistakes or anything like this, but it just means that what you're going to be tapping into is God's good word, God's mm -hmm. gospel, God's promises for you. And, yeah. and if you start your day by listening to, you know, by going on Facebook or by listening to, you know, CNN or Fox news or whatever it is to get your information, to get started, I feel for you. Yeah. You're not going to be like that tree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's just, that's one of the things I. Guilty. I got well, to do that anymore. But I, I do. do too. I start, first thing I do is turn on the TV and I admit it. 
Uh, hey, but, last uh, night. I, but talking with you the last... other day, talking about these things is a lot more fun. Yeah. Did you know what I learned recently from, what's that lady Bible teacher? Shoot, I know her like the back of my hand. Um, <laughs> anyway, she said theology is theos logos, which is yes. God discussion. God, and I, I mean, it's like what we're doing right now is theology, just yeah. talking about God. Even right. if we get it wrong, we're at least we're trying, right? Right. Isn't that interesting? I thought that was something. So we're like, well, the, so we can claim to be theologians. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a loose, loose uh, use of the word, maybe. Right. But actually, we are theologians because that that is right. Theo, God, logos, word, or knowledge, all right? right. So right. it's knowledge of God. Right. And so you, I, what we're just agreeing with is this psalmist who says, this is more important than hanging out with the wicked, listening to what they say, because it, that's going to end up, how does he say? The wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. So when I'm getting my cues from the world, whether that has to do with my finances or whether it has to do with my sex life or whether it has to do with my uh, how, how I'm going to conduct myself as a, as a neighbor, as a businessman, any of these things. If I'm looking to the world and it's wisdom for that, it's fraught with peril. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I look to God's word to try to find that wisdom and listen to him, uh, his promise is that he'll meet me and give me what I need. And after how many years you've been reading this Bible, Mark? Well, your whole life, life, right? Mama read it to me. Daddy told me about it. Ms. Gresham's Sunday school class. And then I went to Bible college. I mean, and, uh, <clears throat> have memorized a whole bunch of it, but I do tend to memorize the passages I really like. Hey, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Because I did the same thing. I I have done the same thing. Which but is one of the reasons okay. I like Go one, ahead, one of the reasons I like using this method of study for the, in the daily office is that it won't let me do that. It won't let me just go back to my favorite passages. Mm. So, for example, you know we've been we've been talking last time about being in this season of epiphany. Mm -hmm. And so starting yesterday on Sunday, yeah, which was the, the first week, of, the Sunday of the first week of Epiphany. Right. Epiphany. The, the Old Testament reading was Genesis 1, starting at the first verse through mm -hmm. the second chapter and the third verse. It was the, the creation story right, right. there. And, and then from week for, for the next, let's see, all the way, one, two, three, four, five, six. For six weeks, I'm going to be reading out of Genesis every day. Okay. Well, finally, on Saturday, uh, the sixth week of Epiphany, um, I'll uh, conclude with the 35th chapter and, and then um, chapter. Uh, and then the, after that, I get into Proverbs. And so does <clears throat> does this uh, Book of Common Prayer lead you through the whole Bible in like a year or something? In, a, in about two years. Oh, in two years. Huh. Mm -hmm. And so like the uh, what ha what's happening in the New Testament, the, the New Testament reading starting today was Hebrews, first chapter. So I'm going to be in Hebrews for two weeks. No, three weeks, four. For four weeks, I'll be in Hebrews. <laughs> till I get all, all the way to the end of the book. So I'll well, read let's all go to Hebrews let's go to Psalm 2. Oh, well, and, wait a minute. And, well, then the, and then John. Oh, we're going to get to John 1, aren't we? Yeah. John, today's reading, uh, or, or, or rather, um, yeah, today's reading is from John 1. 1 through 18. Yeah, 1 through 18. So I've and already I'll be read in, it in I'll four... the Gospel of John now for the next, like, three or four weeks. Yeah. So 
I love that. When book. I first started doing this, I remember there was, I, I, I was trying to find it in one of my old journals because I've been using this for like, I don't know, 10 years or so as a, as a, a way to read the scriptures and read uh -huh. all of them. It's really to get a good overview of scripture going right. all the time. And I remember at some point I was going, gosh, I'm reading a lot of scripture. I'm reading more scripture than I ever read as a Baptist or a Presbyterian, you know, right. uh -huh. <laughs> you know, when I hung out in Presbyterian circles, most of the time I did what you're talking about. I'd go to places like Galatians or Romans and I just read those things over and over because oh. they were full of stuff. And they were the kind of stuff that Presbyterians love to emphasize. Yeah. And, uh, and they're reformed teaching. Right. And the same thing, you know, if you're a Baptist, you're going to have your favorite places because you're working through out of a systematic. But so when I started reading this thing so that I was kind of going through the seasons, going through these feast days that we mm -hmm. talked about, it just kept leapfrogging me all over the Bible. But I'm, I'm not avoiding the Old Testament. I'm not avoiding lamentations. I'm not avoiding, <laughs> you know, Deuteronomy or any of these things yeah. where I just, I mean, I used to visit those about once every 10 years to see, oh, yeah, I wonder what's in Deuteronomy, you know. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was probably about four or five months into this at one point, I thought, gosh, I went back and looked and I had read in about five or six months time about half the Bible. I mean, it felt that way anyway. I went back and looked at all these. I could list out of the 66 books of the Bible. I had read parts of probably half of them. Wow. So all that to say it. It's, to me, it's, it was just a better way for me to try to figure out what is scripture really saying, you know, a, a, aside from systematics, aside from traditions like Baptist or Wesleyan or Calvinist or any of these, what can the Bible really say to me? So that's kind of what I, why I like this. Um, oh, yeah. The other thing I could say about the daily office is every month you read every psalm. So every Every month, you will have read through the whole Psalms. Even 119? Yes. How long does it take to read that one? Well, you're reading like two or three in the morning, two or three in the evening. Every Psalm day. 119, isn't that the, like the longest book in the Bible? No, well, no, it's the longest Psalm. It's got a hundred and something. That, what is what it? I meant. You know, it's got... That would take a while. Okay, well, so... Yeah. And today... Anyway, so we, yeah, we basically explained what this is the last time we met together, so they can watch that one. But I want to, we're going to go through it, right? We're, that's what we're going to do. Well, this we'll just work on a few because it's a lot of reading. Oh, it is? Yeah. I mean, to read uh, today's... Well, then let's just go to John 1, 1 through 18 and do that one. Let's if, do that, all or, right? Because so, I, is that, now that's the reading for when today? That's from the, that, that's... That would be the the gospel reading for today. Okay. It's out of the Gospel of John. So, so you do yeah, one of those every day, a gospel reading? Yes. In this Yeah. And the order I keep wanting is, to say in this book of Mormon that you're but it's the <laughs> book of common it's prayer. Daily, it's called the daily offices at the back of the book. The, the back of the offices. book of common prayer. Yeah. Okay. Right. I downloaded it from and the you know, bookstore. You, you can actually go online, look up Book of Common Prayer. Right. And access online versions of this. And oh. it'll there'll be daily office and it'll say today's daily office, readings only, or oh. or, or okay. you can get it with oh. liturgy. Cool. So so your 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 viewers out there can check that out for themselves. Sure. And, yeah. All right. So anyway. So uh, we're going to We're going to John one. All right. And let's keep that let's keep that um Mess it open because I love the way he writes John one. John one, I love John one. But here I'm I'm gonna read from the NIV. Okay. Well I'm gonna read along with you because it confuses me when you're reading in one and I'm reading in another. So let's go. I'm gonna read okay. along with you while you're reading. Okay, go. All right. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. 
one of my favorite verses in all of scripture, that right there. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. So that's it. That's, the, that's all we read today. You know, I read it in NIV this morning in the RSV and the KJV, which is the one I was raised on, you know. the mm -hmm. And I love how it says in the King James Version, to as, many, to as many as received him, even to those that believed on his name, that part. Yeah. Uh, and in the message, let me just read that in the message. Yeah, please. I mean, this is not NBC. We're not in a hurry. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> the Word was first. The Word present to God. God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness for God from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without Him. What came into existence was life. And the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out, uh, blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. <laughs> there was a man, there was, there once was a man. I used to know how to read. Hold on. There once was a man, his name, John sent by God to point out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show the way to the light. The life light was the real thing. Life light. Let me make sure you, uh, you don't think I'm saying life flight or something. It's, that text is 20. Every person entering life, he brings to light. He was in the world. The world was there through him. And yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> I love that. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. John pointed him out and called, this is the one, the one I told you was coming after me, but in fact was ahead of me. He has always been ahead of me. He, uh, I'm sorry, has always had the first word. Let me read that again. He has always been ahead. Uh, he has always been ahead of me. Has always had the first word. Ooh, I like that too. Yeah. We all live off his generous abundance, gift after gift after gift. 
We got the basics from Moses. And then this exuberant giving and receiving, this endless knowing and understanding, this all came through Jesus the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, not so much as a glimpse. This one-of-a-kind God expression who exists at the very heart of the Father has made him plain as day. Isn't that great? It's poetic. It but is. You don't need to read well, it. So it's, you know, you don't need the, to read it as fast as I read it because you really ought to kind of think about it. Well, and this is the thing that that first chapter, John the Evangelist, John the person who wrote this, now he's one of the disciples. He was the youngest disciple, and by the by the time he's writing this, most scholars agree that John is the last gospel that was written right 70 years after christ right yeah towards the end of that first century right so by this time there's a there's a um there's a community of christ really growing you know and worship and they're 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 figuring out how to worship together they're figuring out all these things they're figuring out how to live together how to have community all this stuff and that's why i think why john reads so differently than the other synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Because what John is doing is helping to form a worshiping community. And you, you it just starts off with a bang right here. I mean, when you hear from a, a translation like NIV or the King James Version, they all say, in the beginning was the word. Right. Now, what does that remind you of? The Genesis 1. Genesis 1, which is exactly what John's doing. John is going to be riffing off Genesis one hmm. for this whole thing, wow. because he's going to, he's really showing this correlation between the very God who spoke all these things into cre- creation is the God is the person I'm talking about. Right. But he's come now in the, in the person of his son, Jesus, through this incarnation, this marvelous thing that's happened. And that's, what's going to be unfolding as I tell this gospel. And that to me is just a, Amazing. This is often called the preamble to the to the Gospel of John, the, oh. this um, this first part, because it just sets the stage and for who would be it, learning it, about. It isn't messing around that it was Jehovah on foot walking among yes. us, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. and this was so God. it's 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 a great way to start reading John and understanding John, and and so I'm kind of excited that for the next few weeks, that's what I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading again this gospel and seeing what do, what am I going to learn this time around? You right. know, what's he going to teach me? So um, one of the uh, one of the reasons that I think too that that the person who put this study together wants us to read John as a part of Epiphany is that early in John we have the baptism of John the Baptist of, of John the Baptist baptizing. Jesus in a way of saying, all right, this is it. This is the one, not me. I came to live in the way. And uh, so the baptism of Jesus is, it's just one of the ways that, another one of the ways that gospel, that, that John starts this gospel off by saying, here's his credentials. You know, he started walking when he, when he wanted to start this ministry, the first thing he does is he goes and gets his baptism from John. And it's, anyway, yeah, that's, it's, that's a whole other thing, but but that, and then within a, within a short time after that, he's going to do his first miracle, right. which is the miracle at Cana, turning right. water into wine. And to me, there's a lot of significant value going on in these things. I mean, we, we don't have to get into it today, but I think that's one of the reasons that, that this is a, a good epiphany a good way to start reading an epiphany through this season hmm. because we want to get this fresh revelation. We want to see Jesus for who he is. We want to understand this gospel and why it was so amazing to everybody that, that it, uh, that had to deal with it back in that first century and why it is even till still today. Right. Well, I remember, you know, I grew up in the church uh-huh. By the time I was, you know, probably 14 or 15 years old, I had just like turned my back on just about anything my parents stood for, their world, everything. 
that this that world we grew up in back then that i grew up in i'm a little older than you but it was the 60s it was vietnam it was it was racial unrest it was you know civil rights all that stuff it was it was just a time of revolution cultural revolution in, in our world mm -hmm. and and the older I got as a teenager, the more I just felt like my parents had just screwed up everything. <laughs> Their generation, they were, they were the, all the fault. I mean, it's typical. I think that happens in just about every age, you know, this, but certainly did then because the world was such a mess we were living in. Yeah. Kind of like it is now. Yeah. And I turned my back on that. And by the time I got to college and started taking some religion courses and things on my own, what I was looking, I was looking for a way to explain the whole thing away. Oh, this is just, this is just superstition. This is just stuff that's been handed down for people who can't hand, who can't handle reality, you know, who can't handle the scientific facts, whatever. You know? So I just had it at all. And I started thinking I could just make all my decisions, figure, figure out the world, figure out philosophy, figure it all out. And that by, you know, in just a matter of time, I'd be on my own. Well, you know, it didn't take long before the wheels are falling off because I was center. I was just making one bad choice after another. Hmm. And they had consequences for me and for the people I was sinning with and against. So, I mean, by my mid twenties or so, <laughs> I thought, man, if I'm so smart, why is my life such a mess? You know? So then it was like, okay, maybe there is something to this religion. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to make, I'm just going to do a little world survey, religion survey. You know, I'll check out the Buddhist and I'll check out the, the Hindu and I'll check out Hare Krishna and all this stuff. And, yeah. you know, and I'll, you and thought I'll throw, too much. You just, I'll, you are I'll, a thinker. I'll throw, <laughs> I'll you know, throw I just, I, Mama in. laid me in Jesus lap and I never jumped out and looked around or nothing. Well, because you didn't wander around like that there in the wilderness. Like well, no, nah, I wouldn't say that, but I just never, I, th I don't know. Jesus just never, I never had any desire to look anywhere else. But you were out there looking and searching. At least I you was were a, searching, right? Sounds I mean, like I was a prodigal in that. I was a, I was a prodigal son and I was waking up in the pig pen. But when you learned about grace. Yeah. I mean, but it took that a long happened? time. I mean, here's here's what happened though. I I said, all right, I'll throw Christianity in there. I'll see, you know, Jesus. I'll see what's good about him too. And, yeah. And I was I was going to make up my own religion. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I started with Christianity first because I thought, well, I know most about this, so I'll go ahead and go here. It's kind of out of laziness, probably. That Were I just you just kind of like cherry pick your favorite parts of all the different religions. Is that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So I started reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm just kind of jump around those because I wanted to find out, you know, who he was. Mm -hmm. And at the time, there were things already. I mean, he was already in the culture. There was the Jesus movement going on in the early, late 60s, early 70s. Right. There was more, uh, plays like Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, I mean, there was a Godspell was another uh, musical that was out popular. Uh, Amazing Grace was being sung on the radio right, by Judy Collins, and it was a it was a top ten hit. I know, acapella. And uh, the Edwin Hawkins singers, "Oh Happy Day." Yeah, I mean, they had. Yeah, I mean, so I, yeah. So man. I'm just starting to I'm starting to read this stuff that I can't hardly understand, but immediately I'm attracted to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I just like all this stuff, but he says stuff that just freaks me out too. You know, that I can't figure out at all. But all, all that to say, I never got any further because I was so attracted to him and what he said was so amazing to me. And interestingly, at the same time, Christians started coming into my life. I mean, I would run into these people who would just start talking about Jesus with me. I mean, and I'm playing in bars and taverns. I'm not going to church. I'm not doing any of that, but I'm still, my father had been converted by this time. And he and my mother, whenever I go over to their house, you know, they're, they're talking about God and grace and, you know, they're, they're friends who are Christians and all this. I mean, I'd go over to my, my mother's house. I'd be like, you know, 
hung over after a day of acting crazy the night before. And she'd look at me because I'd look like hell. And she'd say, are you doing okay? I go, you know, I'm, I'm fine. You don't, you don't have to worry about me. And she said, oh, I'm not worried. I quit worrying about you a long time ago. Ooh. I turn you over to the Lord and every day I lift you up. You are in his hands. I don't have to worry about you anymore. <laughs> How'd that make and you feel? I would, just go, <laughs> I would say, woman, you are crazy. Stop all that, you know, and then I'd, I couldn't wait to get away from her. But all that to say, this is the way God works. You know, the way he worked in my life is, is he let me just have about 10 years of living in the pigsty and just it took about that long before I realized this is no good. There's got, and maybe there's a way out of this. And then he let me have a few years of just trying to figure it all out on my own, seeing if I could come up with my own religion. And in the middle of that, he starts showing up because that's what Jesus does. Yeah. He haunts you. He moves alongside of you. He comes to you in his people. When you open up that Bible, he starts speaking to you. And one night I came home from a Bible study that I had started to go to. And we had been reading in the Gospel of John. Yeah. And in Proverbs. And I just remember coming into my apartment. It was like a little one-room apartment. It was such a dreary little place. And I was I was so lonely. Oh. At this time of my life. By this time, I had been divorced from my first wife. I lived like a complete idiot in throughout my twenties, but especially after that divorce, I just kind of went crazy. And then, about two years of that, I met Vicky, and we started dating. And Vicky was, and you talk about a cut above. She was so much better than what I was used to hanging out with. And I was thinking, I need to be good for her. Uh. And all God was showing me is you don't have what it takes to be good for her. Because every time I would try, I would mess it up, whether she knew it or not. But I, I was not being a, I couldn't be a faithful person. I couldn't be, I couldn't get, be a good boyfriend. I couldn't be anything. And, and that's what became more and more um, apparent to me is that I do not have what it takes to be righteous, to be good. I can put on a pretty good act, but then in the end, I knew I'm, I'm a hypocrite. I may be saying one thing, but I'm thinking something else. I was inconsistent, all this stuff. Long story short, I came home from one of those Bible studies and what was starting to make sense to me in this gospel was Jesus Christ will do in you what you can't do for yourself. Hmm. I wasn't worried about hell because I was worried about the hell I was already in. And it was like, if I can get delivered from this now and just know some peace, know some joy, know some consistency, some self-control. I mean, Lord, if you're real, if you're really out there, because by this time, I mean, you know, back in those college days, I had just said, there's no resurrection. There's none of, none of that superstitious stuff, you know. But all this time, as I'm reading John, as I'm being worked on by the Holy Spirit, I'm starting to think, what if it is? What if he is alive and well today? What if that resurrection actually happened? Mm. So what, you know, I wasn't worried about hell. I was just worried about the life that I was living. And you wanted to be good for Vicky. I, want, I wanted to have a chance with her. I wanted yeah. us to have a chance together. Yeah. But I knew as long as I was just, it was up to me, it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to amount to anything. So I came back from that Bible study that night and I walked in and I sat down on the sofa and I said, okay, if you're real, if you can help me mm. get over some of this crap that's in my life, then bring it on. Mm -hmm. And that was my sinner's prayer. Nothing happened in that quiet, but I was, I was being still before God for maybe the first time in my life. And I was knowing that he was God. And I thought, all right, I meant that. I'm going to see how that prayer gets answered. And there began my walk with God. And it was 
slow and halting, stumbling all along. I mean, I just, I continue to make terrible mistakes. But what I, what I realized is for the first time, I wanted to believe this gospel. I wanted and to how believe How old were you at this, at this time? I was, I was probably 27 or eight, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it still took another year or two before I went to church. It was a long, slow process for me, but God was so faithful to bring me along that, and he has continued to do that. I mean, that, that little story has been repeated for the last 40 years. Yeah. We're not done yet. No. And, and he's, I, I have to continually be brought to this place of buddy, you don't have what it takes, but God <laughs> does. And I'm there with you. I mean, we just celebrated the incarnation, God with us. I mean, that's what we can't seem to get through our head is he really is with us. Yeah, <laughs> he really yeah. is for us. He really well, is you know, in us. He, he, that's it. That John one says all that. Exactly. And, uh, if he, you know, evacuated us, our atoms would fly apart because he's holding us together. He's in all things. He's, he created all things. I mean, that's amazing. Now, right. I got a question for you, because, you know, you talked about those creeds, Nicene Creed, Apostles Creed, remember? Yeah. We were talking about those the other day. So, of course, yeah. I went and downloaded all of them, because I wanted oh, to you? see, the, and there's one called Nathanasius or some other kind of. Yeah, the big, Athanasian Creed, yeah. Whoa, that one's a big, long one. They, I don't know what they yeah. went to, and they numbered every sentence, and they were really into it. <laughs> but the um, I noticed that in one of them, it says, and they took out where it says, and he went to hell for, you know, remember how they said Jesus died? Yeah. And hell old, rose yeah, from the dead. The traditional language. It says, uh, he went to, let me find it. He, he went to, he descended into hell. Yeah. Why yeah. did they take that out? Which one did, I, I, I forget which one came first. It was, was the, so apostles. This, is the, this is the traditional reading of the apostles creed it says, I believe in God, the father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. So in the, in the updated version, it would say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So they just cha updated the language. Mm. But also in that updated language, they do, they say he descended to what? To the dead or something like that? Or, I thought it said to hell. Some, in the, I mean, but, um, no, in the, in, in the old one, he does. It says he descended mm. into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. The Nicene I mean, I mean, says he ascended into heaven. Let's see, wait, he rose again. Wait, on the third. No, not the Nicene. This is the apostle. The Nicene took it out, didn't it? Or yeah, I don't know. I don't have it in front of he me. Was, but we're talking about the Apostles' Creed that has okay. that link. Because I love the idea of him going to hell and preaching to them too, and taking out as many as he could. Yeah, you know, one time you and I talked on on this on this format here, and we were talking about the harrowing of hell. Do you remember me bringing that up? Well, it's pretty harrowing. I know uh, the, way, <laughs> the way they preached on it when I was a kid, it'd harrow well, you real good. Well, the harrowing of hell, let me, let me, this is great. So that's why I love to y'all getting really what you're, what we're doing here is this is how our conversations go on the phone. And I thought, well, why don't we just, we all just call this a conversation with Buddy Green rather than the Bible study. I didn't know what to name this thing, but I love talking to you, buddy, because I always learn stuff. And then I don't have to do all the digging. You just kind of lay it out here like a meal. All right, well, listen, I am just I just went straight to the old, good old Wikipedia and looked okay. and put in harrowing of hell. Ooh. All right, listen, in Christian theology, the harrowing of hell is a period of time between his crucifixion and his resurrection. In triumphant descent, Christ brought salvation to the souls held captive there since the beginning of the world. Jesus Christ's descent into the world of the dead is referred to in the Apostles' Creed and the Athanasian Creed, which state that he descended into the underworld, is the way the Athanasian Creed says. Although neither mentioned that he liberated the dead, his descent to the underworld is alluded to in the New Testament in 1 Peter 4, 6. You remember that? Yeah, let's look at it. You want to? Yeah. Hold on. 1 Peter. I'm just Four, so six. thankful that the phone can be put, I mean, the Bible can be put on your phone. 
because it's so much easier to find it all. First Peter four verse six says, uh, "In which version you want?" Let's do yeah, King, man. Let's do King Read James more. version. Uh, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh. Oh, I quit that. That was my text message sounding off. Okay, First uh, Peter 4, 6 says, For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but living according to God in the Spirit. Yeah. I have no idea what that well, means. That, say, I mean, King James language kind of loses. Well, where should we go? RSV? Uh, let, 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 me, let me read the uh, message. This okay. Really it here. Go. Read it. Did I lose you? Listen to the message. It was preached to those believers who are now dead, and yet even though they died, just as all people must, they will still get in on the life that God has given in Jesus. So that's what it means. Well, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a translation there. And um, let me go back to the, to this at, uh, little NIV. page in Wikipedia. It says, for this is the reason the gospel is preached even to those who are now dead. Listen, this is NIV so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body. What in the world does that mean? I guess that's what... Uh, uh, and, and there's also in Ephesians 9, I mean, Ephesians 4, 9, okay. it, it states that Christ descended into, into the lower parts of the earth. Ephesians 4, I, I thought Peter also said, or... Ephesians 4, 9. Let me go look there. Ephesians 4, 9. And you know, if Christ, when he died between, I mean, after he rose from the dead, or even after he died, he steps out of time, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> isn't God outside of time, linear time? Well, yeah. I mean, this is all speculation, but yeah, that's the way some people. Would, so would I would talk say, about. if he stepped out of time when he, when, you know, like he lives now, well, then he might have preached to everybody who was ever in hell. Yeah, just, just a thought. So, so let me, in Wait. this same, in this same passage on the harrowing of hell from Wikipedia. Okay. They list. They show a bunch of artwork that has come down through the through the millennia mm -hmm. in, the, in the christian world depicting the harrowing of hell and they're all great because it shows jesus usually in like in some cave or something and he's reaching out and he's grabbing the hands of all these people there's just like a multitude of people and he's grabbing them and he's bringing them up don't you love that just like he did us and he's and doing one, for us one but of my I Depictions. Let me see if I can find it. Um, one of my favorite ones, though, he's standing on. It looks like a. It, it looks like a, a, a door, that's bridging something. It's like a door that's fallen down, and there's mm -hmm. a, a bridge. On one side, over here is um, the living, and over here is the dead. And he's holding on to this one. And and uh, and over here he's got um, no no I'm sorry he's got he's got Adam on one side and Eve on the other and he's bringing them up he's bringing them out of hell mm -hmm. so it's this great picture of what God is doing through Jesus for all of humanity isn't that something yeah for everybody's and and so there's just all those here those, it is. Uh, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? This is Ephesians 4, 9 that you mentioned. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the... He went to hell and the outer reaches of the universe. He did it all. Let's see if you can... If I can get this for it. Okay. Uh, is that on the internet somewhere? Yeah. I it's on go. that. It's one. This is one. Of, that's 
that's one of those that shows Jesus in the middle. He's got Adam on one side and Eve on the other. His hand is in each one of their hands, and he's oh, bringing wow. them up. Well, I had not heard of this, but I can look it up real fast. All right, I'm, so I'm at Wikipedia on the harrowing of hell, and I'm looking at all the photos. Everybody could do this. Oh, <laughs> I see the one. Oh, yeah. Ooh, something else. Okay, let me, uh, yeah. I think so anyway, that's just an aside, and that's one of those. It's, it that'll it's show uh, up. Look, buddy, is that the one? Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Look at that. So who's who? So that's uh, in in Jesus' left hand, in the robed in red, that's Eve. Oh, yeah. And then in his right hand is Adam. And he's... And then he's standing yeah, right on this... in the middle. And it's like, he's standing on this thing like a door. It's like the gates of hell will not prevail against him. Well... Isn't that great? That's incredible. Yeah. I love it. So I love this too. And it's like, you know, it's open to all sorts of interpretation. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's what the ascension, I mean, the dissension into hell, the dissension into hell, the harrowing of hell. Cause I mean, there's very little to go on. I mean, we, we got a couple of verses in the new Testament that allude to it. So yeah. it's not like you can build a doctrine on it or anything. Well, we built them on last. <laughs> we certainly have. <laughs> uh, but I love it. It just sets my imagination going and just reminds me of who really is in charge, Lord over everything, even death. It, you know, I don't have to worry about the people that have gone before me, even. I don't have to worry about how God goes about saving people, how God goes about. That's his business. He does it. And these things kind of reassure me that, um, you know, he's doing the work, and my witness is all about just pointing people to the Savior. I love that, you know, just beggar telling other beggars where the food is. That's right. I mean, because Lord knows we ain't the food. I tell people who watch me, how many we got watching right now? 988 on different platforms. But I tell them, look, you better be in a church because I ain't coming to visit you when you get sick at the hospital. <laughs> That's not my gifting. And I'm not going to do therapy with you over the phone. I don't do that. That's not my gifting. I've told everybody I've ever had to ther do therapy with, just get over it. So you can tell that's not my gift. If I think the uh, the answer to your depression is just get over it, you know, I'm not, there's not a lot of sympathy there. But um, my gift is, I guess, to sit here and talk to Buddy Green and let him teach me and you, if you're interested, and and learn you know, together, you know, about because I, I I have loved my journey with you, buddy. Because from the Gaither days on the bus and our conversations with Gloria, remember those days? Yeah. There were some good times. Oh, there were some great times. You know, Gloria and I wrote a song together called "I Don't Belong," and it was hey, sing it. Well, it, it came out of one of those one of those sessions we had oh, in. Over coffee one morning. I know, and, and the great headlines song. were the headlines were horrible that day. There were riots in the streets. There were, you know, there was a headline about some sort of horrible uh, child abuse, um, sex trafficking. There was just it was just like every headline was a was a downer. Mm. We were just talking, what? How bad can this world get? And. We were kind of cycling down, and, and then all of a sudden, I don't know who started it first, but we started remembering, all right, yeah, but who's is God really in charge? I mean, he says he is. And then we started looking at those places in Scripture where he says he is, and no matter how dark it gets, these are the things you need to remember as, as children of my promise, of chil you know, as, as sojourners in this world. So we were reading over there like in Hebrews uh, 11 and 12. And we started reading over in, in Peter's gospel where it says, you know, he says, uh, you are a, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God. I love, I got to read this. Um, we started reading stuff like, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God 
that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Yeah. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. <laughs> when we started reading those passages, Mark, and it just, it just reminded us of who's really in charge. No matter how dark it looks out there, his light is shining, whether the world comprehends it or not or has understood it, or any of that language we just read in John 1. And then within about a week or so, I got a letter from Gloria with, with a, that lyric. a lyrics. And she said, this came from our conversation. See if you can come up with some music. And, um, and did I you wrote, or did you yeah. not? You did evermore come up with a beautiful melody for that. Well, thanks. We both, both Gloria and I really love that collaboration well, on sing that song. It. Sing it for us. All right, grab that oh, guitar. Yeah. Okay, let me see here. Let me get a let me get a pick. <laughs> Can I wet my whistle? Wet your whistle, buddy. <laughs> this is this one was written, you know, thirty years ago. So <clears throat> I could sing a little higher let back me get then. Up here, I'm out of the way. Now we look like we're doing a duet. Look at our heads. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see what I can do. It's not home. Women sell their souls. And the taste of power is sweet. Where wrong is right. And neighbors fight. While the hungry are dying in the street. Where kids are abused. And women are used, and the weak are crushed by the strong. Nations gone mad, Jesus is sad, and I don't belong. I don't belong, and I'm going someday home to my own native land. I don't belong. And it seems like I hear the sound of a welcome home band. I don't belong. I'm a foreigner here, just singing a soldier song. I've always known this place ain't home, and I don't belong. Don't belong. But while I'm here, I'll be living like I'm nothing to lose. And while I breathe, I'll just believe my Lord is going to see me through. I'll not be deceived by earth's make-believe. No, I'll close my ears to her siren song by praising his name. And I'm not ashamed, cause I, I don't belong. I don't belong, and I'm going someday home to my own native land. I don't belong, and it seems like I hear the sound of a welcome home band. I don't belong. I'm a foreigner here, just singing a sojourner song. I've always known this place ain't home, and I don't belong. But I belong to a kingdom of peace, where only love is the law. Where children lead and captives are free and God becomes a baby on the straw. Where, t where rich men, no, where dead men live 
And rich men give their kingdoms to buy back a song. Where sinners like me become royalty and will all belong. Yes, I belong and I'm going someday home to my own native land. Well, I belong and it seems like I hear the sound of a welcome home band. Yes, I belong. I'm no foreigner there, singing a soldier song. I've always known I'm going home where I belong. Yes, I've always known this place ain't home and I don't belong. Buddy, I, I know. <laughs> hey, listen, don't be too proud to lower your keys. You know, as we age, we need to lower our keys. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I, I, when it's not 10 o'clock in the morning, oh, I, I know can, it. I, know. <laughs> I can sing it. You but, uh, wrote a great song there. I love that. I belong to a kingdom of peace where only love is the law. Well, don't you? I mean, where Gloria dead wrote men so live words. and rich men give. I, I, I was on. I had muted my microphone while you were singing because I didn't want any kind of echo because I'm trying to help you have the best sound you can have. And I was going, dead men live, dead, you know, <laughs> but you couldn't hear me. And rich uh, men give the, and God kingdoms. becomes a baby, and God becomes a baby on the straw. I mean, it's just, it's, it's Gloria. I mean, she is such She's a genius. amazing, and she has such great insight into, first of all, just into the into the gospel, into what the kingdom is all about, what Christian living is about, but then that she can encapsulate that into three verses and a mm. chorus. And the way that she does, and she's done it thousands of times. No. She's like a Paul Crosby or something, you know. Do you remember when you first met her? I mean, uh, Bob mm. McKenzie introduced you to the Gaithers, right? He introduced me to Bill in his office. Had you heard of Bill Gaither before that? Yeah, I had heard of him, but I didn't know. I mean, I knew maybe because he lives and he touched me, and uh -huh. that was about it. I, uh -huh. I, I was a real newcomer because I was I was a new Christian. This right. was only a few years after I had received Christ. So all through the 70s, when the Gaithers were making their initial debut on the, you know, on the world with their music and all those great songs, I wasn't going to church. I wasn't hearing any of that stuff. Yeah. I wasn't what, listening to the development of contemporary Christian music or any of that stuff. Hey, we got questions for you, buddy. Here's a question. How old is Buddy Starbucks? I'm 68. 68. Mm. Can you believe that's Bob Saget died? He was oh, younger than he was younger than you. Sixty-five, I think, wasn't he? Yeah, sixty-five. Yeah. I'm sixty-three. I'll be sixty-four in June. You know, I'm wondering. It ain't gonna be long till we're gonna be hearing from, about our friends. Have your friends started dying yet? You might be hearing about me one day, Mark. <laughs> no, buddy, don't. I want Bill Gaither to run my funeral. Yeah, <laughs> he does such a good job. Bill, Bill, he just might outlive us all. I think he will. I think he will. <laughs> I, don't, I think God's given him time to repent. <laughs> <laughs> you think that, that may be the reason? <laughs> or his Bill mansion. His mansion's his not, what'd you say? <laughs> Bill keeps dragging his feet. God keeps waiting. <laughs> yeah, his mansion's not ready. That's another one I love. <laughs> I've told my dad that. Hey, um, by the way, speaking of that song, I Don't Belong, mm. uh, Wes Hampton has recently released a version of that song. Did he? If he hasn't, it's coming out soon. He, he sent me, uh, I'll send it to you. It, um, he sent me a copy of the song. And it's just wonderful. Gosh, he sang it so oh, well. Oh, his voice. I think Kevin Williams maybe helped him produce it, but it's yeah. a wonderful production, and I just love it. You recorded that song. Oh, yeah, I recorded it, I, and I love it. I still sing it. Yeah, oh, I might good. have Kevin uh, do me a new track for it because so I can lower it even more, you know, because <laughs> all my tracks are low now. 
<laughs> I love it. But I, you know, I've got about about a maybe one octave now if I really stretch. But, yeah. Um, you know, I never. I, I was a baritone. All baritones slide into bass eventually. So. Well, you know, being a folk singer, I never had to worry too much about a range or any of that sort of thing. It was just like make a stab at it, and whatever you, whatever you land on, will have to work. <laughs> All right. Well, I have. Is there anything else we want to talk about today? Well, that's good. Uh, you know, if if people want to uh, listen to the the other readings, uh, are you going to post those other? Yeah, you, you, I, I will post them in the show notes. The other readings okay. for that uh, for the whole for today, just for today, it is. Yeah, summer in the morning, summer at noon, at night, right? Right, and you know, it, like last week, I gave you some readings, and it was actually. You know, the daily office comes in two in like a there's a, a plan for one year and then there's a plan for the next year and then it mm. repeats every two years. So okay. I actually gave readings from the other year. So I was I was given the wrong information. Oh, every day. year it changes, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, you're either on one year or the other. So we're on oh. the, I think we're on the second year of the of the two year cycle. Okay. All right. So um, well, everybody we wants to hear a, a harmonica song before we go. Okay. Buddy is so talented. The, those of you just being introduced to him, he's not just a brilliant thinker and theologian. He plays, sings, songwrites, and also blows the, what do you call that? Juice harp. <laughs> the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> Sing it, children. Sing it again now. Oh, one more time. I love it. All right, y'all. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, I think I'm going to be live at 10 tomorrow also with Walt Merrill. Walt Merrill, buddy, is um, about to release a book. He is Brenda Gant's son-in-law. And those of you that follow him on Shepherding Outdoors, which is his Facebook page, you'll know uh, Walt. But, buddy, thank you so much for today. And we're going to do this again, especially when you get that new microphone. <laughs> Thank you. And, All right. And and then right. we're going to work on lighting and camera. All right. <laughs> Thanks for having me, especially in, in sharing my low tech world with your uh your uh, fan base out there. Well, thank you for sharing your brilliant mind with me and my friends that watch us. I don't us. know how brilliant that is. But anyway, it's always good to be your guest and it's great being your friend. I love you, brother. I do love you too, buddy. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.